guys, what's going on? It's Ash here coming at you today in a live ladder series. We're already into our first match against B-Rad from the United States in Virginia. He is an Expo Pro, and I've always wanted to have him on the channel with his signature 3.0 Expo Cycle deck, which you can see right below me in the deck slot. It has Fire Spirits in there for Ice Spirit, but just that one card makes a huge difference in the deck, and he is currently top 15, I believe, ladder, top 20 ladder right now and it just really goes to show that expo is not dead as long as you're able to play it using a lot of discipline and I chose that word discipline very specifically we'll talk about that more as the match goes on so B-Rad unleashes the lightning but Dank does get a temporary expo lock on that left tower taking about 600 damage off of that left tower so just a lock for what was that like a few seconds it felt like at least able to get a lot of chip damage on that left tower that's definitely a win for Dank Ganon here early into this match against a really good pro player in B-Rad. B-Rad playing a really funky deck here, eh? a Prince Lightning Skeleton Barrel. I wonder if his last card is minor or if it's a bigger spell. Uh, we'll be sure to find out here, but in the meantime, we have a Tesla set up here. We have Skeletons to stop that Prince's charge, and it looks like Dank is going to get another lock on that left tower, and another Lightning comes down for B-Rad. Now, I wonder if he's going to drop another Expo here, seeing as he already has that Tesla still at about two-thirds, oh, about a half HP uh, left remaining. So let's see what he does here in this situation as we go into double elixir uh, time here. So he's going to reload, and there it is immediately. We have the Ice Golem to tank a little bit, and then we have, again, the... Uh, we, we used the log pretty early there. Sorry, guys, so much going on. We used the log pretty early. It looks like we're going to rely on those Fire Spirits to take care of those Skeletons, and we get a another really really valuable lock on that left tower now a fireball coming down as well from Dan Gannon you better believe that Brad's probably going to go super aggressive on this push here and here it comes a prince a skeleton barrel a inferno dragon lightning comes down again as soon as that ice golem comes down we have log in cycle and a, a what <laughs> a goblin barrel is the last card from B-Rad what is he running guys it is a really weird log in zap bait deck all in one all the spectators are kind of laughing here really cool to see brad playing such a weird off meta cycle deck it's like zap and log bait as we mentioned all in one deck so the opposite lane expo set up here defensively for dank ganon that's going to do a good job chipping away at all of those kind of annoying chip ground cards all those skeletons goblins whatever b rad can throw at him here and it looks like he's going to be happy just to spell cycle b rad out interesting decision that he went with the defensive opposite lane expo there to help out again with the chip damage or I should say the chip damage against all the swarms and it's just happy just to, to fireball cycle here and that's the discipline of Dan Ganon who is an incredible expo user when you talk about the best expo players right now in the game you definitely have to include Dan Ganon's name he's been at the top of the ladder as I uh, opened up this video uh, for a long long time now it'll be interesting to see if he plays in CRL maybe in 20 19. Anyway, he picks up the victory off the, the GOAT himself, B-Rad. Guys, I'm going to go ahead and check where he is in the global leaderboards right now, and then we'll probably have to cut it out, cut out and edit into the next match because of the wait time. So he's currently 18th at 6191. This guy, look at his look at his challenge cards. 701,000 challenge cards. This is the deck, by the way, guys. If you want to go ahead and copy it, the deck link will be in the description below. Let's go ahead and hop into the next match. I'll be right back with you guys. Alright guys, here we go, match number two against John Lee, and again, you know, this deck, Expo, right, I I've been just as, as, as prominent as anybody else out there talking about the woes of Expo in the current meta. It's it's really in a bad spot with all the beatdown, and it just feels like every card they add to the game, kind of like Sparky, right? Whether it's true or not, every card they add to the game, it just feels like, oh, that's going to be tough for Expo users. Every card that they buff in the game, is it, it seems like it makes things more difficult on Expo users. And while I do stand by 
the fact that Expo probably does need a little bit of a buff. I would give it a little small buff to the load time. There's no doubt about it. There's still a lot of players out there that can have success with the car. That's why I wanted to do this video for you guys. I wanted to give you a template, a resource that you can look back to, especially if you want to learn Expo or just get better at Expo in a pretty difficult meta that you guys can kind of use as a template. So what I want to do is make this video a little bit longer and you guys again can come back and watch the decision making process of Dan Gannon. That's why we have this series on the channel to begin with. Just these live top ladder matches because one, the card levels are all the same. They're max. And two, all the players that we're going against are really, really, really good players. So that's why we do it at the top of ladder even though I do enjoy bringing those mid ladder, ladder uh, matches from time to time like we do with Mini Minter and uh, I think we've done one or two with Bag as well. So if you guys want to see either of these series continue, just let me know in the comments below and uh, any feedback that you guys are willing to give is much appreciated. So here we're going against a Hog deck, and it's a Hog Ice Wiz E Drag deck. Of course, it's E Drag deck. I feel like E Drag really does have a spot in every single meta deck, and it feels like especially at top of ladder, e Max E Drag is in like I feel it's it's in like 75% of decks. It's really insane the power of the E Drag. In fact, I've noticed a lot of pro players being a little bit more vocal about E Dragon specifically aiming tweets directly at Rumham, who is the lead designer uh, and balance guru on the Supercell team. Uh, here's one from, from Eddie I just noticed this morning. Yeah, a lot of players not too happy about the power of the E-Drag. The e a lot of people saying it's the most, the strongest card ever added to the game, including cards like Night Witch. But anyway, back to the match, guys. I've blabbed on for about two and a half minutes. That's pretty much the uh, status quo here on the channel. We're going to go ahead and use Fire Spirits and see how much damage they do to the Hog Rider. Do you guys agree with me that Fire Spirits are such an underrated card? They basically just disintegrated that Hog Rider in the left lane. Now, here's another Hog Rider. It looks like we're going to have to use him again here, guys. We use a Log, and we use Skeletons this time. But the Hog does actually get a few hits on that left tower. So maybe not as smooth a defensive sequence there that time. The Fire Spirits will not get to the tower, but we do take both of the Cycle cards out of the opponent. Look at the deck that John Lee is playing. It's a Hog Cycle. It's, it's It has both of the Cycle cards. Nice Tesla placed really up high here. Always switch up your Tesla placements, especially if they have Fireball in hand. And we set up with a defensive expo. Now, notice that expo placement, guys. This is something that Dank Gannon, even more so than the other expo pros I've had on the channel, does quite often. He'll set up those far far side defensive expos. Maybe, well, look at the placement right there. See that placement, guys? It's just really crucial. And that's the best defensive placement because it really encompasses the entirety of the left lane. And against the hog, you can actually pull the hog rider with a Tesla all the way to that expo if you use that placement. And boom, just like that that making it look easy and notice that Tesla guys he switched up the Tesla location again just in case that fireball came down another victory for Dan Gannon a really really good player and that was a beautiful illustration of how you handle hog matchups if you're an expo player so let's go ahead and hop into the next match all right guys here we go sorry <laughs> almost missed that entry to the next match it was such a down that was a that was kind of a long wait we had to wait about uh i don't know seven or eight minutes but kind of got distracted in the meantime like whoa here it is three seconds we're in against a vitin uh from dark light clan shot to dark light a uh, a mexican pro player who's also a really really good uh expo player so we'll see what uh vitin is playing here he starts out with a skarmy so man you're seeing all of look at these look at the deck that he's running right now skarmy Goblin Gang, Spear Goblins Giant. It almost reminds me of that, uh, of that, uh, Graveyard deck with the, uh, the Giant in it. We'll see if that, in fact, is the deck or not. You know the one that I shared maybe about a month or two ago here on the channel with, uh, No Candy Only Wi-Fi? I think that might be the deck we're going against running the Skarmy, the Goblin Gang. There's a lot of Zap Bait in the Graveyard, but I could be wrong here. We'll have to wait and see what the rest of the cards are. Either way, it looks like we're going to set up again for another offensive expo sequence there. We did get a temporary lock again on that right tower to start up this match. Giant 
giant is in hand so this will be a good matchup to watch guys because a lot of people struggle against any giant deck basically when the opponent can have a five elixir card that hard counters your six elixir expo you really need to support a lot and then rely on these momentary these temporary locks on the tower and you saw it happen again there we've already taken that right tower down to 1560 even though dank ganon played that expo knowing that the opponent had giant in cycle and that's something that you'll see him do he'll, he'll start out with a, a support card in the back a mega minion and then he just knowing that the opponent does have that that giant in the cycle he's not scared necessarily of it again he just wants to take care of that giant and then put the opponent uh, off cycle put them in an awkward situation where they can't mount a strong counter attack and again he gets that lock on the right tower really making it look easy here but this is exactly the type of strategy that you guys want to employ against a giant deck now golem's a little bit more tricky but maybe we will face a golem match in this live video who knows we'll wait and see if not we'll certainly go over the strategy together so here we go again it's gonna be that defensive expo there it is again set up so we can pull that giant all the way across the entire arena there's the graveyard we actually called the deck guys he has log in cycle though and he has fire of spirit so nothing really to be worried about there the giant didn't even make it anywhere near that expo instead we had that strong support from the expo we had the strong the defensive support from the tesla and that's what you guys want to do kind of that chain creating that chain of defensive structures can be incredibly difficult defensively and check this out we have two expos both on the giant the expos are actually taking care of that giant there and now they're going to take care of all these skeletons look at that look what we have going on there in the right lane guys we do take some heavy damage though to our left tower from that graveyard kind of a weird deck to go against but with the two expos and the tesla we eventually get that lock on and there it is another victory so a quick three you know including a win against tribes uh b rad so really impressive start to this video way to go dank ganon let's go ahead and hop into match number four and see if we can keep the win streak alive guys okay match number four underway screen is god all right screen is god i've seen this guy around before i have no idea what he plays though so we'll see how dank starts out this match now starting plays obviously you can just cycle in the back this is the type of deck where you can just cycle your cards randomly in the back it will help you defensively and to prep for a potential expo push because you'll have those troops already on the arena before you drop your expo so here we go again baby dragon in the back for screen it looks like with the mega minion baby dragon this could potentially be a golem deck we asked for it maybe this is exactly what we'll get so Fire Spirits do a great job against Baby Dragon, taking it out with the help of the Mega Minion there. Barbarian Barrel comes down immediately. There goes the Expo from Dan Ganon. And there's the Golem. Oh, man, this is going to be difficult here. Spectators laughing about it. I'm not sure that Dan Ganon is necessarily laughing about it. Uh, we'll be able to stop this push, but this is a type of matchup that could cause problems, especially as we get into double elixir time. So the Lumberjack finally making his way around that Golem. Skeleton's doing a really good job holding him up there. So a really nice defensive sequence there for Dan Ganon. But remember, we had to expend a lot of elixir to make that happen. And uh, the opponent is playing Golem after all. So all the opponent really has to do here, well, all Dan Ganon has to do here is play defensively. I'm not sure if he'll play as defensively as he normally would, but I know a lot of Expo players, they're kind of of two minds. What about you guys? Any Expo players out there, what do you do if you run into a really difficult matchup like this? Golem, namely. Especially the E-Drag deck, which is going to cause that Expo to retarget momentarily onto that, uh, that Barbarian. This could be trouble, really. I don't think you could get a more difficult matchup. And then he miss misses that activation there with that Ice Golem. You have to time it just perfectly. It can be tough, especially as players are learning exactly how to activate from that E-Dragon. So a little bit of a missed opportunity there from Dank Ganon against Screen is God. So anyway, back to my question. What do you guys do? Uh, Golem in the back gives him an opportunity, by the way, here, guys to drop that expo and potentially get a lock on potentially even take down that left tower and you can see he's going all in here he uses his tesla which he you know feasibly probably needed to stop the golem on the other side we do get a lock but now we're kind of in trouble here i don't know how we're gonna pull this golem the opposite lane we don't have we have expo in cycle but we certainly don't have okay okay there it is we're gonna drop the expo and that will chain everything together but the lightning comes down this is gonna be a really big issue here 
for Dangan. And Lumberjack, though, goes opposite side tower. The power of the Lumberjack is going to connect for a ton of damage on that left side. Skeleton's down to mitigate the damage on the right tower. But check out the left tower. Just that Lumberjack and the raged up Golemite is going to take that left tower down to 1051. And there goes the Golem. Perfect placement on that Golem. Lumberjack down on the expo there. And things are getting a little bit out of hand here for poor Dank Ganon going against this very difficult matchup. I don't know how he is going to pull this one off, guys. He's not making any huge mistakes here, but this is just, you know, I still haven't said the question, right? But do you guys play for a tie or do you play aggressively? Dank Ganon, certainly, I'm not sure if it's just for the video, played that one really aggressively. He went for it. He tried to get the win there and it didn't work out for him against the most difficult matchup. So we do take the first loss. Let's go ahead and do one more match, guys. We'll see you when we get into match number five. So here we go, guys. Match number five. He is underway. And again, you know, against the Golem matchup, you can just play defensively, not go for those offensive expos at all. Of course, Dan Gannon doesn't strike me as that kind of guy. He didn't want to make you guys sit there and wait painfully for six minutes. But at the same time, you can play that match differently. You can play. Talk about what we did in the Giant match, right? Just creating those chains of expos into Teslas. You can play for the tie if you want to. And that's what some... Uh, Expo players will advocate people do when playing against those really difficult matchups. So now here we go against, wow, a Lumberjack Valkyrie Ice Whiz deck. I gotta think it's a balloon deck. And again, going back to, I probably mentioned this the last, like, what, four videos now? But I did rank the Lumberjack as my spoiler, by the way, in my legendary ranking video. I ranked him as the second best uh, car, legendary card of the game. A lot of people kind of took issue with that, said that I was a little bit out of my mind in ranking Lumberjack that high. But already on top ladder, at least, we're seeing him back-to-back -back decks, two different types of decks. And even that Hog deck that we saw earlier, I think the Lumberjack would fit really nicely in that deck as well. So here we go, Nova Bin. And it, it, again, guys, it has to be a balloon deck. The Lumberjack Jack Balloon synergy is really, really strong. And the Valkyrie actually, I feel, just like the uh, Fire Spirits, is an underrated card right now in the meta. So if you guys are having an issue with Swarm or you have NATO in your deck, it, like this deck certainly probably does, I would consider running uh, Valkyrie. Valkyrie has a really nice synergy. And here it goes. The Lumberjack Balloon combo that we just talked about. We have Tesla in hand, though, and the Fire Spirits help out. However, the Raged Up Balloon looks like it's going to get to the tower here, guys. Nope, it's not going to get to the tower. Dinkin is ready with that fireball he gives the well played though he does take the balloon death damage uh which we just talked to b-rad on the channel talking about how as a balloon cycle player even if you can get the death damage a lot of balloon cycle players look at that as a victory look at that as a win getting that balloon to the tower and getting that death damage so here we go again it looks like another balloon setup here unless it's a juke play in the left we have the valkyrie we have the mega minion okay it is a juke we have the lumberjack and balloon again coming down the right lane here uh but this is going to be relatively easy here, I believe, for Dank Ganon to defend. He has that Mega Minion still alive, doesn't even need the Fireball. This time, a perfect opportunity to set up for an Expo in the left lane. Let's see if he takes it here, guys, knowing that the Balloon is not in cycle. And there it is. Expo down. We have Tesla up. No, we don't have Tesla up. Excuse me. We have Fireball up this time, though, and Fire Spirits again coming in clutch there. The power of the Fire Spirits in this deck, guys. And the Balloon's gonna take care of that Expo, but we still get a couple hundred damage off of that left tower with that, again, brief lock that we got with the expo so we take the death damage and immediately another expo this time what is he gonna do he doesn't have balloon yet back in hand he has valkyrie what does he have okay valkyrie so we're setting up with the expo the opponent with the wow here and how are they gonna break through this we have the tesla ready we have the fireball in hand freeze comes down okay that's how he's going to deal with it. Okay, I see what you did there. And the Tesla's not even going to be a threat here. So we set up with the Expo in the middle. And I was hoping he would do this in this match, guys. Stacking that Expo in the middle like that in this situation, although it does not pay off for him here, is something I often see pro Expo players do. Especially if you want to cycle to another Expo in the same sequence. Recognizing that the opponent, Bin, actually used his freeze there, committing a lot of elixir, and then the balloon, he was able to cycle to another Expo. And even though, again, he didn't do a lot of damage, he's doing one important thing here, guys. He's taking the opponent off of their game with his aggression. And look at the wow. Look at it from Bin's point of view here, guys. Since that early Lumberjack balloon, 
He hasn't really been able to do anything that he wants to do offensively. He's busy trying to defend these really strong pushes, or I guess these really strong Expo Siege setups here. And it looks like he's going to get another lock here with a half HP Expo. He only has Freeze for a spell. He can't Fireball or Lightning. And that's going to be GG here. Another victory for Dank Ganon. And Ben is just left laughing about it. What can you do, right, guys? Well, you know what, guys? I think that's a good spot to end this video. Really enjoyed watching Dank Ganon's uh, gameplay there. He wanted me to give a shout-out to FA Clan, who's really helped him grow as a player, so certainly a big shout-out there. Also, check out his player stats and profile and see if you can keep this amazing push going at the top of ladder, thanks to StatsReal.com. That will be in the show notes below. Guys, huge shout-out to Bren Chong, my YouTube partner. Check out his information as well. Thank you so much for watching all the way till the end, guys. I appreciate that. And as always, take care, guys.